The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Operation Wolf comes as a fresh whiff of gunpowder to those who enjoy nothing more than a swift bit of blasting enemies. But we all know, war is hell. And now, here you are. With an Uzi 9mm in your hands, a pouch of rocket grenades and a few extra magazines of ammunition. Arcade goers will no doubt be more than conversant with Tato's Uzi modified shoot 'em up. Unfortunately, Ocean couldn't manage to include a replica of the Israeli 9mm submachine gun in the package. But the game suffers surprisingly little despite this apparent deficit. Instead, the programmers came up with a far cheaper solution simply by replacing the gun with a floating on screen crosser. Hostages have been taken by a military force and are held in a prison camp, deep in enemy territory. A lone soldier is needed to fight his way through to the camp, locate the hostages and then get out of there. No, not John Rambo, but you, codename Wolf. In an operation that requires an elite warrior for the job. With six areas to fight through and an enemy determined to make this mission your last, your trigger finger, or joystick button mashing finger, won't stay idle. Enemies come in the form of infantry and mechanised vehicles. Foot soldiers run into view firing rifles, pistols and machine guns. Commandos throw grenades and paratroopers descend from above, blasting as they drop. Hits taken increase your damage level, which, when at maximum, results in your death. Shooting power drink bottles labelled with a P partially restores damage. However, all wounds are healed when the village level is complete. In the heat of battle, innocent civilians recklessly wander into view, and these idiotic bystanders must be left untouched, or else your damage level will soar should any accidental deaths occur. Although a nuisance, they do force you to aim carefully and save ammunition. Running out of bullets is not recommended. Fortunately, grenades and magazines can be shot to gain extra supplies, and should you hit the F bullet that appears randomly, a super machine gun is yours with which to increase your murderous mayhem. You are indicated of this with a flashing super icon instead of your usual magazine next to a 10 second countdown, and whilst active, your ammunition will be infinite. As with other ocean games such as Arkanoid 1 and 2, they also include the option to use a Neos mouse instead of a joystick with the original game, and it has to be said this is the much preferred method of play. It's responsive, accurate and allows the mortar rocket type grenades to be launched using the second fire button. Mind you, the joystick option was implemented about as well as it could be, but still suffered from being slightly unwieldy and prone to oversteer. Also, there is the problem of having to reach for the spacebar to fire the grenade mortars, as with a lot of games of this type. I've just remembered chugging 10p after 10p into the arcades back in the day, and clearly remember the death screen. I have sustained a lethal injury. Sorry, but you are finished. As the grim sounding voice will kindly inform you, sorry, you are finished here. And when you ran out of ammo, you had to go and join the hostages. <laughs> Trust me, I saw those screens a lot no back in the day. Left. You must join the hostages. Every time I see a game in the arcade that has a cabinet that's loaded with some type of weapon, I always say to anyone who's standing with me, hey, looks like another of those Operation Wolf type games. Let's check it out. It's true. Anything with a gun is Operation Wolf, until you get closer to see which game it actually is. Ooh, it's Operation Wolf, Terminator 2. Ooh, another Operation Wolf style game, House of the Dead. Okay, maybe not. Oh, and let's not forget Mad Dog McCree, just for no reason. I just wanted to stick this game in here, as it's one of my favourites from being a kid, even if it was mega expensive to play and I never got anywhere because the sights on the gun were always knackered. What we need a gun slinger. The Amiga version of the game was similar to the arcade style, but it all seemed very jerky. 
I honestly didn't enjoy this conversion as much as the Commodore 64 one, but many of you will probably remember this too. Although many features fell by the wayside in this conversion, shootable animals, soldiers with bulletproof vests, or bazookas, Ocean did succeed with this 8-bit version, and was a rather competent conversion of the arcade machine classic, which is covered with a curtain fire of breathless action that leaves you in a daze for six levels. I think what contributed to the high difficulty, to a certain extent, was the horribly unprecise joystick controls mentioned earlier, and a likewise doubtful collision detection, both of which can sometimes make for a frustrating experience. The idea to let the crosshair speed up when you move it over a long distance was really pretty suboptimal, and took some muscle memory practice time to get used to. The overall look of the graphics may feel a little blocky, but then that is hardly surprising, considering the amount of size of the sprites on screen. I think that Operation Wolf on the Commodore 64 will satisfy fans of the coin-op, but the limited gameplay could disappoint others fanatically disposed. However, personally, I do think that ultimately it was a brilliant conversion with tons of atmosphere and playability, and you should definitely give this a go, especially if you can play this with a mouse. Thanks for watching guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if so, please don't forget to hit like and let me know in the comment section. It would also be massively appreciated if you could maybe show some love on your social media platforms by sharing the content from these Commodore game videos, as this way it'll help the channel grow. This helps me out a lot too, and for that I'm grateful. If you're enjoying the Commodore 64 nostalgia, then do be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on this epic journey revisiting classic games just like this. If we've not covered your favourite game yet on the playlists, then I'm sure that it would be just around the corner, so stick around and maybe it'll be in the next video. Hopefully, I'll see you all there. Thanks again, and until then, bye for now.